Several people once removed from Tennessee's sex offender registry now face an uncertain future after an appeals court ruling just this week. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Hunter Hoagland. And I'm Carrie Sharp. The three-judge panel determined that just because some people faced new restrictions for crimes committed before the registry existed, it doesn't mean Tennessee's registry is unconstitutional. News Channel 5 investigative reporter Levi Ismail has followed this issue for years. So what is the impact of this ruling? You know, attorneys right now, they're scrambling to figure out what this does for their clients. You know, they're trying to make sense of how this will impact the people like Thomas, who we've been speaking with since 2022. He managed to have his name taken off the registry last year using the same argument as many others, an argument the appeals court now says could use some work. In 2023, the district courts agreed with several John Doe's who filed a lawsuit claiming Tennessee's sex offender registry as it stands violated their constitutional rights. They argued that they shouldn't have to follow restrictions from an ever-changing registry that was completely revamped in 2004, long after their convictions for more than a decade earlier. It's the same argument Nashville attorney Cal Mothers had told us he used last year to remove his client Thomas and many others from the registry. This was not the law when you committed your offense. Then they made it up after the fact, and that's against the Constitution. That is unconstitutional. And they've all worked so far. By then, U.S. District Judge Alita Trauger agreed to grant a sweeping injunction, effectively removing several names from the registry. But the appeals court now says just because some restrictions may appear unconstitutional, that doesn't mean the system is unconstitutional. Although they see similarities with Michigan's sex offender registry that was eventually struck down, appellate judges ruled that district courts should review each case against the restrictions they've challenged before deciding if someone's constitutional rights were violated, something Thomas says was never in question. I might not have been physically locked up in prison, but mentally out here, I was still in prison. And I'm just talking about because they had control of my life. I had, still had to do what they, what they wanted me to do. Years after his conviction, jail time, and parole, the legislature made it so Thomas could no longer live or work within 1,000 feet of a school, playground, or park, even though his conviction had nothing to do with children. It also meant people like Thomas would have to spend the rest of their lives on this public registry. That all changed last year. I'm talking about this made me, when this came off, it made me feel human again. News Channel 5 investigates found that Thomas was one of at least 73 cases challenging Tennessee sex offender registry over the past five years. Of those cases, at least 34 people convinced the judge to remove their names from the registry either temporarily or for good. Thomas has since remarried and now lives a quiet life with family. Meanwhile, it's not clear if this appellate court decision will impact cases where people have already been removed from the registry or if it makes it harder to have names removed in the future. One thing is certain, this may just be the beginning. Now, the three-judge panel also said that although these lawsuits were filed against Governor Bill Lee and TVI Director David Rausch, Lee doesn't enforce these laws, so his name will be removed. The case with these eight John Doe's still has multiple reviews ahead before the panel opinion is considered the final word. Even then, either side can request a review from the entire Sixth Circuit before possibly taking this matter to the Supreme Court. With News Channel 5 Investigates, I'm Levi Ismail.